In this video, we're going to learn how to draw applique blocks in EQ7 for block number three of the EQ7 Summer Drawing Series. We've already learned how to draw piece blocks on the Easy Draw and the Patch Draw block work tables. We're going to continue to stay on the Patch Draw block work table, but this time we're only going to be working with applique. On the block work table, we have the option to draw patch draw blocks or patch draw motifs. Now what is the difference between a block or a motif? A patch draw block has a block outline. Whether it's square or rectangle, it'll have an outline behind it that can be colored. A patch draw motif shows up on the motifs tab in the sketchbook and the palette. If you edit this to the work table. It does not have a background patch. I cannot color this background area. This allows you to float blocks on layer two of the quilt work table. Let's get started. I'm going to open, I don't need to save that, that was just an example. And I am going to choose EQ7 Summer Drawing Sew Along. If this is your first lesson of the EQ7 Summer Drawing Sew Along, you can click here and just type the name here. EQ7 Summer Drawing Sew Along. And then click OK. I'm going to go back here and select my project and click OK. I'm going to click the block section and you can see these are the blocks that I've drawn already for the sew along. Go ahead and click close. If you're not on the block work table, click work on block. Now we're going to start with a patch draw block. So block, new block, patch draw block. Like always, make sure that your precision bar is turned on with the checkbox here. Since we're going to be working on applique blocks, let's click the applique tab at the bottom. Now click your pick tool. And in the precision bar, we're going to change our block setup. So type in 12, tab, and 12. Tab again, so snaps horizontal, is 12, tab, 12. Now when I'm saying tab, that just means to press your tab key on your keyboard and that just moves your selection to the next entry box just to make entering these numbers a little bit faster. For graph paper cells, click the button to select it and then type 2, tab 2. Now over here in our snapping options, I'm actually going to turn off all of the options except for the last option here, auto join segments when drawing. Now you can see our work table looks like it's split into four different quadrants. Left, right, bottom right, bottom left. We're going to draw four different types of flowers for our applique lesson. So for flower one, we're just going to work in this top area. On the left toolbar, click and hold to display the flyout menu. Select this fourth petal here. Starting at the center of the upper left quadrant, which is here, click, hold, and drag to the right, creating a petal shape. So I'm going to start here in the center and drag to the right. When you release the mouse, the shape will fill to a solid cream color. It would only do this if you have this option here selected, the auto fill. If you don't have that selected, you're going to be able to see behind your patches and they're not going to be filled in. So I recommend having that turned on. Go ahead and continue to draw patches to create a flower. You just click, drag, and release. Our first flower is finished, but it's not perfect. It's not uniformly sized or spaced. We're just trying to learn, so that's fine. We'll leave that one as it is. Let's try another me method that will create perfectly spaced petals. For flower number two, we're going to be in the upper right quadrant. So we're going to work over here. I want you to go back to that same shape tool, click and hold, 
and select the heart. Now place your cursor over the top center grid point of the quadrant and drag down to the center grid point. So I'm going to start right here in the top center and drag down to the center grid point, which is here, and release. Go ahead and click the pick tool in the top left corner. You can see the heart remains selected. On the precision bar, click the wreath maker tool. This is a really fun tool. If you haven't used it, start playing around with it because it's, it, can, it can create a lot of really neat blocks. So here we want to change our settings to 6. And you can type these in rather than using the sliders if you'd like. My cluster spacing, I'm going to bring all the way down to 5. And resize cluster, let's leave it at 100%. Now click OK. And we have a wreath of hearts. It centered itself because that's what the wreath maker is supposed to do. So we would like to drag it up to the top right quadrant so we keep our flower separated. All right, we're not quite done with this flower, so let's go back to the oval tool, click and hold, and get this circle. And let's draw a little center for our flower. Click, hold, and drag, and release. You can hover your mouse over the center until you see crosshairs and then you can move your center around or resize it however you wish to. All right, so flower number three, we're gonna work in the lower, we're gonna work in the lower right quadrant. We're just going clockwise. We're gonna go back to the oval tool and select the second to last shape here. Now let's draw a teardrop starting on this left, the second point down on the left, and draw to the bottom center and release. Now click the pick tool. Now you can see here in the pick tool there's a small red square and what that does is it brings up another little box with more options. So click that red square on the pick tool and we are going to want to clone and flip horizontal. That's what flip H means, flip horizontal. So we have another patch here. We're just going to move it over. You can kind of see what we're creating here. Go back to the oval tool, click, hold, and select the fourth shape option. Starting at the center grid point, we're going to click, hold, and drag down to about the center of the flower and release. And we want to send this behind these two petals, so we're going to right click and choose send to back. So now that petal is behind it. Let's see that again. It's currently in front of these two petals. We want to right click and send to back. You can also use these options here on the precision bar, send to back. And that's our finished tulip. For flower number four, we are going to be in the last remaining quadrant here on the left. You're going to get the polygon tool and select this hexagon shape. We're going to start here in the top center of this quadrant, click, hold, and drag downward, and release. Now for this flower, we're going to be changing this hexagon quite a bit, so let's zoom in. We'll get our zoom in tool and drag a box around the hexagon and then release. You can see we're zoomed in now. Click on the shape tool on the toolbar and again you can see there's a little red dot here so we're going to select that. Now with the shape tool select one of the lines of the hexagon. Over here in the box I'm just going to move this up here. Add and to curve are the options that are available. If you click to curve, two handles were added to my line. If you click on the square at the end of one of these handles, you can see how you can change your curve. So I'm just going to play around with these a little bit. Oops. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now I'm going to repeat this process all the way around my hexagon to create a flower shape. Click, 
to curve and then pull out the handles until you have a nice shape that you want to work with. Now another trick if you don't want to use this edit arc box the same options once again are also available on the precision bar. So you can see here add and to curve are also available up here. So I select my line and hit to curve and it does the same thing as using the edit arc box. If you're zoomed in too closely you can use these scroll bars to give yourself a little bit more room. I'm going to click to curve. There's no right or wrong to this, the shape of your curve. You can do this however you want. and there is my flower. So let's click the pick tool again and get the options box by selecting the red dot here. Click on the edge of the flower to select it and choose clone. Now like I just showed you up on the precision bar usually has the same options available here as they do so you can actually click clone here if you'd like and another option will display right click and resize. We're going to change the size of the second flower to 70 and 70 and hit OK. Drag this. Now to drag, remember you have to click on the center. You can't click on the outside edge. You have to click on the center to move it around. Now right click once you have it centered and choose rotate. We're going to rotate this 30 degrees. And we're going to repeat this again. So clone, resize, 70 and 70. I guess I need to rotate first, or center it first before I rotate. Center and then rotate. 30 degrees and that's done. We've, we've completed all of our flowers. You can hit the fit to work table button to see the whole block. Now go to the color tab and color your block. to sketchbook. Now click the view sketchbook button and let's look at our block. Here is our block right next to the other ones and I'm going to choose note card and type in my information for block number three. So on the name line I'm going to type EQ7 summer oops, Summer Drawing Block 3. I'm going to tab and tab again to get to my notes section and I'm type in 12 inches by 12 inches drawn on applique patch draw work table. Again you can put any information in here about your block that you'd like or maybe you don't put anything in here at all. It's up to you close the note card and close the sketchbook. Now we're ready to print our pattern. Click print templates 
like usual, we need to change this to 12 inches because that's what size our blocks are. First, I want to talk about the seam allowance. Some applique techniques require a seam allowance and some don't. So that's really up to you and how you want to construct your block. If you do not want seam allowance, just uncheck it and turn it off. If you do, leave it on there and put in whatever seam allowance width you'd like. You can see all of your template pieces are here across six different pages. We don't need this center square, this background patch. That's something that we can cut without having a template printed and we'll save paper by getting rid of it. So let's hit the delete key at the top, select the square, you'll notice it's selected when it has a red border around it. Now press your delete key on your keyboard and it'll disappear. Now you can move template patches around to try to save even more paper. So I just clicked move, select the patch, when it turns red, you're able to move it. And then just release. All of my template patches are now on two pages, but it's still showing a third page. That's fine. It will not print because it does not have any patches on there. You see it, still see it in the preview, but it will not print when you press the print button. So from here you can go ahead and click print if you are ready to print these patterns or you can click close to go back to your work table. This is the end of lesson three or block three for the EQ7 summer drawing sew along. We will do this again one more time to finish up the summer.